The knowledge of normal US anatomy is the basis for the orientation in endoscopic ultrasound. Therefore, the training of important anatomical landmarks is mandatory for each endosonographer. The main message of this video is how to find the anatomical guiding structures in the upper abdomen in longitudinal endoscopic ultrasound. The advantage of longitudinal EOS is based on the axis of the ultrasound scanning plane parallel to the axis of the instrument. Therefore, EOS guided diagnostic and therapeutic interventions are possible. If the instrument is positioned along the longitudinal axis of the body, for example in the esophagus, the transducer provides sagittal or coronal US sector images. In the moment where you leave these positions, for example during the passage into the antrum or into the duodenal bulb, atypical sections through the body will appear. According to the parallel axis of the ultrasound plane to the endoscope, US rotations to the left or right are the main movements of the endoscope. If the transducer is directed dorsally and placed along the longitudinal axis of the body, a rotation of the instrument to the right will move the transducer to the left side of the body and a rotation to the left to the right side of the body. Because of the anatomical position of the duodenum, a rotation at the level of the papilla to the right moves the transducer ventrally and to the left dorsally. For the demonstration of the guiding structures, ultrasound frequencies between 5.0 and 7.5 MHz are recommended. The focus of the ultrasound machine should always be placed at the point of interest. In the upper abdomen you have three important reference positions to identify the anatomical guiding structures. First the cardia, second the duodenal bulb and third the level of the papilla. Following the descending aorta, you will find step by step the exciting vessels along the abdominal aorta. First, the celiac trunk with common hepatic artery, splenic artery and left gastric artery is visible. Because of the anatomical position of the celiac trunk, only the main trunk and the cranially running left gastric artery can be depicted in front of the aorta. To follow the common hepatic artery or the splenic artery, a rotation to the left, respectively to the right, is needed. Cranially to the cellular trunk in front of the aorta, the echopure diaphragma appears. Close to it, 
The pearl-like celiac plexus can be seen and should not be mistaken for lymph nodes. A few millimeters caudally, the origin of the superior mesenteric artery is visible. Due to the longitudinal axis of the vessel, this artery can be depicted almost completely. In between the superior mesenteric artery and the ventral wall of the aorta, the crossing left renal vein is in sight. The splenic artery and the more caudally located splenic vein can be followed in cross-section by a rotation to the left into the splenic hilum. These vessels provide a good orientation for the examination of the pancreatic tail and body. Once you have identified the splenic vein, it's easy to follow the vein into the splenoportal confluence by a careful rotation to the left. On this way, sometimes the inferior mesenteric vein is visible. The superior mesenteric vein reaches the confluence caudally in front of the inferior cava vein. In addition, parts of the pancreatic head and of the antenate process are observable in front respectively behind the confluence. If the transducer is now turned further to the left, laterally to the confluence, the pancreatic head which encircles the confluence can be shown. The pancreatic duct is running caudally towards the major papilla. To follow the portal vein the endoscope should be turned further to the left and pulled back. From this plane, the common bile duct can often be depicted in his interpancreatic curves. Now follow both structures to the portal hilum. Close to the transducer is the common hepatic artery, which accompanies the common bile duct and the portal vein. Together with the hilum, large parts of the liver are visible and should always be included in the examination. The transducer is now directed ventrally. On the turn back to the aorta, it's possible to see the origin of the left renal artery together with the vein as well. They can be followed into the renal hilum. In between the cranial pole of the kidney and the aorta, the left adrenal gland appears. In the ventral position of the anterior gastric wall, the left liver lobe with the segments 2 and 3 can be seen. By a rotation to the left, the intrahepatic veins can be followed into the inferior cava vein close to the diaphragm. For the passage through the pylorus into the duodenum, Optical orientation is obligatory. In longitudinal EUS, as in a duodenoscope, 
the tip of the endoscope has to be slightly elevated to pass through the pylorus. If you fill now the balloon with water, a sliding back into the antrum is prevented. Again, from the duodenal bulb, parts of the portal hilum and the gallbladder can be seen. The gallbladder can be examined by push and pull maneuvers, rotations or by angling the tip using the small wheel. Sometimes, after passing through the pylorus, the rigid tip of the instrument can reach the wall of the duodenum quickly. Therefore, care should be taken and the instrument be rather pulled back, the tip angled downwards and slowly moved into the second part of the duodenum. During this passage, you should avoid any force, especially in the risk of duodenal diverticulum. As in ERCP, the instrument has now to be straightened, whereas the scanner will lie considerably deeper than the papilla. Occasionally, the aortic bifurcation with the extending iliac arteries and the interposed common right iliac vein can be seen reaching the inferocava vein. If the instrument is now rotated to the right, the transducer moves ventrally and branches of the superior mesenteric artery and vein are visible. The instrument should be straightened until these vessels are seen in their longitudinal axis. They are the landmarks for the pancreatic head. The vein is running cranially into the confluence the artery to the outer. To reach the papilla, the instrument has to be withdrawn in a right position. In normal anatomy, the pancreatic duct and the common bile duct are visible in the acopure ventral part of the pancreatic pan humor. The common bile duct is located close to the transducer and can be followed by a careful left rotation to the level of the cystic duct and the infundibulum of the gallbladder. The main pancreatic duct is running into the echo-rich dorsal part by pulling back the instrument. The accessory pancreatic duct, Santorini's duct, which reaches the minor papilla, can sometimes be seen too.